Hello, everybody. This is Purge, bringing you another Purge Cast of Pub. Uh, once again, I am still sick, so my voice is going to sound weird on my intro. I like can't go that deep. I'm sorry. Like If I try to do it, I'll try to do it right now. I can kind of. <clears throat> it's like that low part of my vocals. I don't know what it is. Maybe there's mucus covering my vocal cords. I'm not sure. But um, it's the Purge Cast of Pub. I got this uh, submitted by somebody. I don't know what their name is. <clears throat> I went through about... Oh, God. Get out of my throat. Um... <clears> throat> I went through like 15 messages that you guys sent me, and I found three games that looked pretty good. Once again, don't send me games that are over an hour long. I'm not going to cast your 90-minute low-skilled pub games. It's not enjoyable for me. It's like 45 minutes too long. The, the sweet spot is anywhere between 30 and 50 minutes. Somewhere in there is the games that I want to cast. Make sure it's even. If it's not even, I'm not going to cast it. If it's too long, I'm not going to cast it. That's how it works. And also, if everybody plays too well, like all, if all your item decisions are too good, then I'm just kind of like, yeah, there's not that much to talk about here. So, um, regardless, uh, let's go over the players quick. For the Radiant team, we have uh, Mr. White picking a hero. We've got Hartengen, Hartengenik playing the Magnus. Pi is playing Venge. Three period G O is playing Shadow Fiend. Anti is playing Anti Mage. And Mr. White's playing Lich, by the way, for the Dire team. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Um, that guy's playing Timbersaw. V for Vocha is playing the Ricky. Nakashi is playing the Faces Void, and we've got Who's H Infinity Z is playing X, and uh, Brainstorm is playing Pudge. So let's look at some starting item builds and things like that. Mid lane, Shadow Fiend is going for Necromastery level 1. This is fine. Um, he spent all of his money, let me think, 150, uh, 300, 350. I think he bought a Courier. I think Shadow Fiend honestly bought a Courier, which is very generous of him. Maybe at his skill level, it's not very often that they get Couriers. This is going to help him get his bottle faster. I mean, obviously it does delay his bottle money, but um, decent last hitting power from this, by the way. This is not a bad build to go because Shadow Fiend does have terrible base damage if you don't get this, like, plus seven stats that he has here. If he didn't have that seven stats, he would be hitting for, like, 38, which is horrible, horrible base damage. A Pudge with a start of 58 is easily going to be able to last hit that. So Shadow Fiend, or I'm sorry, Pudge with a Stout Shield should be able to block a lot of Shadow Fiend's damage. He should have been blocking back here by the way but he did not uh, long lane looks like it's a lich he should be getting dark or sacrifice at level one he should be eating one of the creeps immediately upon them spawning and that will guarantee that the lane does push um so that's a big mistake for him additionally a double mantle of intelligence i think is a big big waste on a lich it's pretty good for the fact that he can harass this the carry with it but i think grabbing support items buying a freaking courier or observer wards is by far the right choice on the bright side the uh, extra mantles will give him more mana pool for frost blast but as a hero i really don't think lich needs it so i would say that the mantles are going to be good for harassing the face is void but that's probably about it and at the start i mean he has actually done quite a bit of damage but i think that uh, the better build is just go a little bit more a little softer on stats and opt for support items it would be the best Forget it. though he is doing a crap load of damage to faces void faces void went for a quelling blade first with the slippers of agility make sure that you don't buy slippers of agility if you have open item slots this is a waste he could have three ironwood branches here it would cost three more gold and it would give you six other stats. You'd get three HP or three strength and three int out of it. So don't get a single slipper of agility like this unless like you're really, really wanting to build into something. And regardless, I still think, I'm not sure what he was expecting in his lane matchup, but probably at low levels, you should expect a dual lane. And I think a stout shield is oftentimes a little bit better. If you're okay at last hitting, um, it, I think he does need to get a stout shield quite rapidly here, but he'll hopefully get there soon. That was Timbersaw dying here on the bot lane. Uh, picks up a level of time walk. I think this is a mistake as well. Time walk is good, but he should have a backtrack because he is taking some harass. Even 10% reduction to damage is still going to be effective. Pudge gets a solo kill on the Shadow Fiend uh, with a little bit of level EXP. So, or level advantage now, which is very good for Pudge. And Axe's jungling picks up Berserker's Call. He is going to be stacking this, actually, which is very good. It's a little scary to actually kill wolves. Um, I don't know if he stacked the small camp or not, but he did stack the medium camp. He can actually kill this, I think. With all the satyrs here, there's a lot more attacks coming on Axe, which means that there's more chances of him spinning. And he's actually going to even use Berserker's Call, which I think in this case is actually a decent idea. He might still die... Uh, possibly because the at the wolves do do a lot of damage, but he's going to end up spinning everything down. So gets a lot of experience out of that. It costs him a lot of HP, but I think the Berserker's Call is honestly worth it because uh, 80 mana at this point, he's not going to use his mana anyways, and it's going to give him 40 freaking armor. 40 armor is huge damage protection. I think he should kill the small camp. 
but I guess he's going to walk away and maybe he's going to pull away if, is what's going to, what he's going to do, which if he's doing this, this is actually really smart. He's played very well in the jungle here. This is a very good idea. He could go on the small camp here, but instead he's opting to pull this camp. Um, it should be stacked most likely before you do this, but it's going to give at least some EXP to solo X. And um, it's a little greedy for him to do this because this wave will then push guaranteed, which, you know, not very good for solo faces void, but... Um, He's going to be able to heal up with his last Tango here and regen quite a bit and then go back towards that small camp later. So Axe is playing quite well. Um, on the long lane, we have a Ricky Maru who ended for a double slippers. I don't know what his other item builds were, but he's now harassing the Ventral Spirit. He's taking some damage here. Timber Saw does not have Timber Chain, which is a mistake. He does actually use his other ability. Will they get the kill? He pops the salve. Looks like he's going to live. No Blink Strike. Oh, Ricky, you are crazy, man. That guy was way gone. Uh, Timber Saw has reactive armor already picked up. You should probably go Timber Chain first. At least get one level of Timber Chain so you can't escape. But he should also be using Whirling Death here. I mean, spend the mana. Reduce his uh, survivability. I mean, it would reduce his agility by 10%. That's a 3 damage reduction. You do pure damage to the guy. It's not the bad. It's not a bad thing, honestly. Though he is going to regen quite a bit by reactive armor, which is kind of cool. But him getting last hits doesn't look very likely. Pudge actually almost dies, apparently. Uh, gets really close to dying Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend does not have a bottle yet. Pudge has 900 gold in the bank, but no courier, of course. Oh, there's a courier. All right, good. Ricky bought a courier. Wraith Band is picked up for Ricky. Don't finish your Wraith Bands before you get boots, most likely, unless you buy them at the start of the game for last hitting potential. Uh, Sacrifice was finally grabbed by Lich, which is good. Uh, he should have some boots right now. And Bloodseeker, hopefully getting free farm. I think he should have one level of Blood Rage, by the way, because he can cast that on Faces Void to make sure he doesn't time walk and get out of danger. So, at least one level of Blood Rage. Otherwise, Bloodseeker is essentially not contributing to any lane at all. And this is part of the reason why Bloodseeker shouldn't be in a dual lane, is because... He already doesn't do a whole lot before 6. If you're in a dual lane versus an enemy hero, I mean, the best usage of something like Blood Rage would be to use it against a hero that probably... he just I think he just got a solo hook kill, pretty sure, without having regen, but... Um, unless the courier brought him anything. Unless you're, like, in a lane versus an anti-mage or something like that, and you're trying to kill him with stuns, and you Blood Rage the guy, like, what do you... It's, there's not really a lot of good options against that. Anti-mage is going to blink away, of course, because anti-mage is a good hero. Blinks to victory. There are a decent amount of uh, anti-mage counters, though. Faces Void as well as Ricky are both good against anti-mage, so that should be okay. Look at this Pudge. He's still waiting for items. He's going to bring a bottle and a magic wand. This isn't even going to be enough regen. He should also bring probably healing salve to himself, probably, but um, he doesn't have enough mana for a hook. He's literally got a... He should have just gone back and then TP'd back to lane. Like, he's gotten two kills now on the Shadow Fiend. And look at his last hitting. It's actually less. For God's sake, I mean, he has like a two-level advantage, which is huge, but, but damn, dude, come on. Shadowfiend picks up a DD. I guess he's going to go gank a side lane. I think this is arguably a mistake, but Bloodseeker is chasing pretty hard. I think he should be able to get this kill. Yeah, he does get it. Axe with no battle hunger. Sick raise by Shadowfiend. Wow, he was really off. He was literally trying to raise on this Axe, and Axe was, like, not there. I, that was pretty weird. I And Axe, of course, can't get a kill because, you know... Unless he can get this Berserker's Call off, and he's actually just going to give it up. If he had any levels of Battle Hunger there, he could have gotten that kill for sure. Ooh, how many times will he spin? Spin, 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 spin. Nope. It was just two heroes, not that much. Nice raise, actually. That one was good. He could have killed that hero. Um, I think Shadowfin could have gotten that for sure. And there's a Pudge and a Hook, and Pudge gets another kill, so... Rupture on Axe. His Axe is going to die. The cooldown of blood, uh, Rupture apparently low enough. And three levels of Thirst, actually. Once again, get a freaking Blood Rage, man. <clears throat> good time for Frost Nova, actually. He only gets one bash in, though. Brainstorm wants a kill. Will he get it is the question. Here comes... Nope, he's just going to dismember the Lich and gets the hook off as well. Might get a double. He does get it, and he suicides. Nice play by Pudge there. That was good. 4-1-1. One, and one. <coughs> Man, I wish I wasn't sick anymore. I remember last time I got sick, I was sick for like a week or two. It was really bad, and everybody was getting really annoyed because it was like, oh, wow. Your voice still sounds shitty, and I was like, yeah, well, I can't do anything about it, I'm sorry, and it kept happening, and I feel like that's going to be the case here. I'm almost not sick, that's what it feels like, but apparently not quite there yet, so sorry about that. Ring of Health on Faces Void, uh, still has no Stout Shield, I'm sure that would keep him very survivable, he doesn't have one. Nax is still jungling, still does not have Battle Hunger. Now, I think the only way that this build is effective is if you actually go really, really fast Blink Dagger. I think getting a Blink Dagger with this build is the only way to do it, personally. Um... <coughs> I mean, look at that. Like, he can't do anything in lane unless the enemies walk into melee range and attack him. There's going to be another Rupture on Faces Void, at least uh, actually be changing targets here. And that's just going to, yeah, not do anything. Rupture's kind of a bad skill if that's kind of all you have. 
Oh, uh, he's doing some more spinning, actually. Yep, and that, that I think that's going to be it. Yeah, nice. Bloodseeker does end up going down. So Wow, look at the spins. And with the ulti from Colleen Blake, he got really fast there. So that actually worked out okay from Hose. I was kind of surprised about that, to be honest. Worked out. Just enough mana to do all the combos. The spin does 205 physical damage. One of the nice things about maxing this out early is that early game, people have low armor. Late game, they have more armor, which means that counter helix is very, very good early, not so good late. I still think Battle Hunger is a better ability to use, but um, he is getting some kills because of the mistakes that the Radiant team is making. So I still don't think this build is viable, at least at any reasonable level. Unless you get like a free farm lane and you go for a fast blink dagger, or you try to take towers really rapidly. I just think... In almost all situations, Battle Hunger is almost always going to be better. If he gets ruptured, he's going to die here. Yeah, he's going to get killed in about 10 seconds, I think. Oh, nice hesitation from Faces Void there. He wanted to make sure Axe got away. Nax did. He might still be chased. He should be, because he just has to get ruptured in two seconds. Here comes the kill. Rupture, 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 rupture. Got him. All right, cool. Nice shot by Bloodseeker. Still doesn't have Blood Rage. <coughs> but he's got Speed Boost again, actually, so this looks pretty good. Hello, Faces Void. He's just going to right-click you until you die, and it's going to happen. Yep. Double kill for the Bloodseeker. Blood Rage. Blood Rage. Do it, Blood Rage. <laughs> Gosh, I don't want to cough anymore. Just kill your point. Get Blood Rage. anti major, you're in trouble. God, Ricky's still level 5. What is this crap? He's got two levels of Smoke Cloud. Not worth it. Don't get any more points until your other skills are maxed, guys. The radius does increase, of course, but um, you you need Blink Strike and Backstab to be an effective carry at all. So, Still no Timber Chain on Timbersaw. He's got 700 gold here. Pudge looking for a Bloodseeker kill. Has he skilled Blood Rage? It doesn't look like it. Oh, the TP gets cancelled from Faces Void. Mistake from him. Will he hook this? Does he see him? If he hooks him, he can do the combo. What? What? I guess he didn't see him. Didn't have the vision. Lich possibly went for Tranquil Boots. Skill build is okay. Um, item build, once again, Mantle is a little overkill, but it's fine. He should have some items. Uh, no flying courier for either team, just regular couriers. Please upgrade your couriers, guys. That's really good. His Timbersaw should definitely have some Arcane Boots, but I don't think he's been able to afford it. And a double raise on Ricky kind of means he has to go back to base here, so... It's kind of the one, one of the really, really weird things going on about their crappy lane setups is that with the dual lane, both the Ricky as well as the Timber Sock kind of need farm. Oh, that's going to be a good change. Oh, wow, it hit him twice. That was so lucky. Now Axe is going to die. Unless he spins like 8 million times. Oh, he gets the ulti off. Oh, nice. It's a play by Mr. White. <laughs> I'm sorry. The uh, H Infinity Z. <coughs> God, I coughing. So sorry. I wish there was an easy way to mute, mute but there isn't. Like, I literally can't mute myself. I don't think. So, like, oh, damn. I am sleeping a lot. I slept for, like, 10 hours last night, but I'm still not better. Ugh. All right. Axe is actually playing really well. Um, out of all the players in the game, he seems to be making the least mistakes. I still don't think the skill build is ideal, but considering the build that he's going, um, it, it's actually working out quite nice. So, he is going to roll into the lane a bit. Anti-Mage here with a Claymore. Going for a Battle Fury. And once Axe aggroes all of these, he will be fine. He's actually going Tranquil into Vanguard, I think. Which might be a slight waste. I really do think that this build requires you to go for a fast Blink Dagger. If he grabs Blink Dagger, he can actually gank side lanes quite effectively. So. Though he does have to split this farm with Faces Void, of course. Really not a huge fan of this item set. It is the Boring. <coughs> Best one is definitely the the time. What is it? What's it even called? I don't remember. The the set I have, that one's the best. That one is the best for sure. Avenge on the bot lane going for Ring of Basilius. It's not a bad build. I'd I'd prefer it be a magic one, to be honest. The mana region is decent, but it's not that fantastic. I was actually an observer where that spotted the Pudge on the way, so Pudge does not get an effective hook off. He has power treads at the moment, which are okay. It does give you some more HP. Your attacks, the attack speed is usually not used that much because you're usually channeling dismember, but there are times when Pudge will auto attack a lot. He actually does have pretty good base damage. Looks like Faces Void actually chronosphering this, and uh, X is going to try to make some plays. <coughs> Battle Hunger actually helps a lot there. Put some slow on the Bloodseeker. And Faces Void's going to have to fight this, I think. He's not getting any bashes, though. Zero bashes. Another call, actually. And yeah, Bloodseeker's going to go down, so Bloodseeker will end up dying. Void will run away, and we even see Shadowfiend showing up. Oh, this could be bad for Axe. First raise misses, but the second one lands. And despite the nice play from Axe, he still dies. 
I'm sure you would have loved to have a Vanguard there. Rot? Rot? He should have rotted. That was a big mistake from him. He's actually not going to get this kill now because he chased for a couple seconds. He lost his opportunity. He definitely could have rotted the guy. That was weird. A couple Pudge mistakes. Ricky really wants this kill, but he doesn't have Blink Strike for a while. He's still level 6. What's going on here? Still doesn't have any Timber Chain. There's the ulti. Pull it back. Ricky's gonna fight him under tower, I think, and he's gonna die now. Yep, Ricky makes another mistake. <coughs> Ricky really needs to stop fighting people under towers, that's the biggest problem. That is not very good. Basilius Unvenge. And Void is now ganking, he should be farming actually. Kind of a really, really weird low skilled game here. Alright, Vanguard Tranquil Boots, Axe is now tanky. He has decent armor from Tranquil Boots, which goes away when he fights anyways. He's got two levels in Battle Hunger. He's going to find Invis. This actually be great for initiation. He needs to kill the Anti-Mage a couple times, I think, because once he gets Battle Fury, I think anybody can farm effectively with Anti-Mage with the Battle Fury. And 13 and a half minutes is not bad for the uh, the farm there, so it looks okay. Shadow Fiend has full souls, which is great for him. He picks up a level of Presence of the Dark Lord. His aura is great, minus three armor. Bloodseeker still doesn't have Blood Rage, apparently just going for Bloodbath and Thirst. He's forcing his opponents to do dumb things, and then he can profit from that with extreme movement speed. Spin, spin. There we go, you got this! There's the ulti. Now Anti-Mage is going to blink, because he does that and he leaves. Still got two kills, no deaths on Anti-Mage. But they should be able to take this tower. Uh, the axe should just tank the creep wave and it'll be easy. A couple spins here. These guys should not be tanking the wave. They're wasting a lot of HP. Let axe do it. He's like the most efficient creep backdoorer. Creep cutter. If you guys are wondering why I'm coughing a lot, it's because I'm talking, actually. So, sorry about that. It's not really... The only way to stop it would be to talk less, and that doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. This is a kind of a greedy chain frost, but it's looking like it might actually work. Nope, never mind. <coughs> God. <laughs> Crap. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. What? 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 <laughs> he got it. Boy, did he get that tower. These guys are actually, I mean, other than the really awesome Chronosphere usage, like, things are working out okay for them. Like, they're they're kind of using their abilities effectively. I mean, alright, it's 13 to 13, that's not bad, that's not bad. Check out some stat stuff, uh, 5 kills on the Bloodseeker. He's going for a Yasha, possible Sun. oh, damn, he grabbed Blood Rage. Damn, he grabbed Blood Rage, he's ready to silence now. He should use this most likely on, I would say, Pudge. Or Timber Saw. Those would be the heroes. And this would be a good opportunity. Rupture him, silence him, silence him, silence You gotta silence him, dude. Cog, oh, you can fight this. He can fight this, I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Punch does have a lot of base damage. I think he could, though. Maybe with some hero backup. Anti Mage actually is gonna find him. As long as they silence Punch, he can't do anything. Silence the guy. Silence him. Don't silence him. Oh, he does die. Bloodseeker gets the kill. Bloodseeker is the man in this game, man. He is really good at right clicking. Really good. Some nukes on Timber Saw. Oh crap, he got Timber Chain. Two loves of reactive armor as well. Invisibility. Gives him some pretty good regen. And an invis on Faces Void. Of course he can't Chronosphere. Number one, he does that mana. Number two, he actually used it on that tower to get the last hit. So. Axe doing some spinning up in here. And he wants to fight, but once again, no Chronosphere means that this is not going to work out. He's actually trying to build a battle for you, but he's going to be quite delayed. The last hit's going to go to the Radiant. In the meantime, Ricky is farming on the top lane. He has two Wraith Bands and a Robe. So he's probably going to Fusal Blade. Concerning the circumstances in, Wraith Bands are probably not a terrible idea. Um, they're generally a bad purchase for a couple of reasons. Axe is going to take this up. He actually might get this kill here. Let's see, he actually does. He was probably hoping to ulti this. Rupture is going to guarantee. No, actually, his allies are going to come. Great, uh, great initiation. Shadow Fiend will die. Axe is trying to stay alive. Can they get him? Oh, man, that 40 armor. Bloodseeker's going to be so pissed about that. Armor, sick armor. So Axe was finally taking up. Armor plus Vanguard, by the way. Now, Vanguard uh, applies before the armor does, so technically it's not like it makes you invulnerable, but the best you could have is damage reduction. Like percentage damage reduction plus a shield. Similar to what Tide works with. Tide is really good at reducing damage output. Anyways, uh, Wraith Bands generally are more like a... They're a very weak item. 
they basically make you stronger for a very short period of time. It's like having a couple extra levels on your opponent in terms of stats, but it doesn't really give you a whole lot after that. It, now, Ricky does all of his damage based on his physical DPS, so in that sense, a Wraith Band is very good. Like, grabbing a Wraith Band on Ricky is much better than grabbing Wraith Bands on, like, Venge, for example, because she leverages a lot of her damage from positioning and Magic Missile. But for a Ricky, it's not the end of the world, especially when you're in, like, a crappy dual lane and you're trying your best to actually not suck for the rest of the game. I think it's okay for that. Come on. Phoenix. Alright. So, let's see what Pudge is doing. This looks like a dead Timber Saw with no mana. He still doesn't have very much HP. I think his items are actually okay, but ideally you'd have these items much, much early. And once again, you would also have max out Timber Chain and enough mana to get away. I don't know why Faces Void was there, but he's also going to die. I mean, he should just be sitting top last sitting, but it's a big mistake that a lot of new players actually make because they don't know when to stop farming. And Faces Void is obviously doing it way, way too early. Um, Ricky's actually going back to base because he doesn't have any HP regen, which is a problem for him. The only player that's actually doing really well on the Dire team, I think, is uh, Axe as well as Pudge. But yeah, that's definitely the case. Pudge is doing quite well. Axe is doing quite well additionally. 9-3-3 three, and three on Pudge. He's got a Ring of Regen now and an empty bottle, so he's going to go back to base, I guess. Shadow Fiend has Treads, Wand, and a bottle, so still pretty early farm over here. And Anti-Mage with Battle Fury is trying to carry the game, of course. A little auto attacking. Venge is actually stacking up Ancients, which is going to be very, very useful for the anti mage. So good on the Venge to do that. Yasha's finished on Bloodseeker, and we actually might see anti mage die. Oh, unless he can hook him. He really needed to hook the guy. He's going to die now. So nice for Bloodseeker to be able to throw it to him. If the hook lands, <laughs> this guy's a really cool dude. Just a really cool dude. Anti mage, you're the man, seriously. What a man. This picks anti mage. Shit talks immediately afterwards. Like, the hook's probably gonna miss. It's really hard to land the hook. You have, you almost have to, like, queue it up early when the anti mage isn't expecting it or something. It does do pure damage, though, which is really good against anti mage. What else is pure damage? Uh, oh, yeah, Timber Saw. A lot of Timber Saw's damage is pure, including Timber Chain, Whirling Death, and I think, yeah, Chakra Mist does as well. It's all pure damage, which means it's gonna be very good against anti mage. Um, kind of a cool counter. There's not a lot of pure damage sources in the game, but Timber Char is definitely one of the. Timber Saw, excuse me, is definitely one of the heroes that really um, increases the amount of pure damage in the game. So, kind of a cool, kind of a cool addition. No. Uh, Lich picks up two Null Talismans, a Tranquil Boots, and a Point Booster. This is because you grab the two mantles at the start of the game. You don't have to finish your Null Talismans, guys. And in fact, I really don't recommend it against, I really recommend against it. It just gives you stat items, and you can basically get those stats with other things, like, for example, a point booster. I mean, granted, it's not stats, but it essentially is stats. It's HP and it's mana, which is what you grab stats for generally, especially on a caster hero. Uh, we will see Bloodseeker go for this kill here, and the Chain Frost will help them get it. Oh, they're going to have... Yeah, Bricky's so dead now. He's been dusted, and he's got the Bloodseeker thing on him. So... Don't get the Null Talismans. I mean, you spend about 500 gold on each of these. He could have sold the Mantle for 75 gold apiece, and then just gotten a Point Boost or something. He's going to an Aghanims anyways, and Aghanims builds into something that's a lot of stats and a lot of HP. There's no reason to delay that by grabbing Null Talismans for very, very marginal early game advantage. And that's all he really did by grabbing those two Null Talismans. So, if you ever buy items like Null Talismans or Wraith Bands, I really don't recommend getting more than one. Almost always. The only example that I can think of that is at least semi-common we're going to see a swap here on the Void, which will help out a bit. <coughs> the only time I can ever think of being okay to buy multiples of those is if you're playing a hard support and you're really behind and you're trying to uh, turtle the game. And you're just trying to get as much HP as possible, at which point buying one, two, maybe three bracers is sometimes worth it. Just because you want as much survivability as you can, and you oftentimes don't live long enough to get a lot of survivability up. That's probably the only case where I think it's okay. That was a big ulti from Shadow Fiend. Death ulti, that, that is. <coughs> that was a really good play by H00Z again. Battle Hunger slows down the Bloodseeker, but I think he's going to get him. Nice! Good cloud. That was a good idea. Oh, that was hilarious. Denver saw used the hook shot like hook shot. Like a hook. Didn't work. Might be able to grab the kill to seize another Battle Hunger. And Battle Hunger? There we go. Okay, so there's the slow. Bloodseeker is now pretty slow. 367. That's actually slightly. Oh, with Void showing up. Yeah, that's over. And X takes the kill. I said good day, sir. Still doesn't have a blank dagger, but it's kind of working out okay for them. Lich could have had his Aghanim Scepter by now. Well, it does uh, increase the damage, I believe, and the cast range, I think, is what it does. Faces Void doing some slight pulling. Where's Anti-Mage? I'm sure he's still shit-talking in his head. 
uh, treads Battle Fury and Ayasha. He probably should have, if the enemy heroes were actually competent at all, he should maybe have a little bit more HP in the early game, because heroes like Ricky as well as Faces Void can't counter you quite easily, but since they're not playing effect, being played effectively, it's not that big of a worry. But if this was at all serious game and you're playing anti-mage versus hard counter carries like this, I would recommend at least an early vitality booster. Just to make sure you have more, uh, more HP to be able to survive that burst damage. On the bright side, Axe doesn't really have to worry about his weird skill build anymore, because, I mean, he's like level 13. Doing quite well. A little wave of terror on him as well. He looks kind of dead here. He just put Blade Mail on, at least, which will buy him some time. Probably should have thrown the slow on him. I think Lich should have. Should have taken the damage. He's got so much HP. Throwing a Frost, no Frost Blast wouldn't have been a big deal, and the slow would have been more important, because he probably could have died there if the Radiant team actually played that. They just got a little too scared of the Blade Mail. They're like, oh god, it's Blade Mail. Can never attack him, but it's it's really just a tactical choice. In most cases, Blade Mail is actually not very effective of an item, and it's mostly because your opponents know when to attack you, and regardless, if you have 1,500 HP and four heroes are splitting that damage evenly, they only take, like, after reduction... I guess 1,500 total damage split uh, four ways, which is like, let's do some crappy mental math. Um, it's definitely not 500 apiece, it's less than that. It's probably about 300, 400, about 400 damage. 4, 8, 12, a little bit less than that, like 370, I would guess, somewhere around there. So you're only taking about 370 damage a person. That's not that bad. Blade Mail is really most effective when you use it against a hard carry who does way too much damage to you in a very, very short period of time and only takes that damage solo. That's where it gets useful. He's actually got Mantis now, though. His HP is still very low. He should probably sit on Strength Treads now, to be honest. It would actually be kind of funny to see him. Oh, he's going to die, though. Once again, Axe being really way too aggressive here. He's trying to get solo kills. Yeah, this late in the game, it's not worth it. He should be ganking with allies or just kind of continuing to farm the map. I mean, they have more hard carries than the opponent. If they actually do get Ricky, as well as face this Void farmed up, this would be beneficial for them. So blink forward after the Pudge. Can they get slows? Ooh, only still level 1 swap. And they will run away, I guess. Looks like it's going to be a Basher Bloodseeker with Yasha. Not a very strong build, but it kind of works. I, I think Bloodseeker builds are very weird as a whole. Like, it's kind of hard to know what to get. And in terms of this, it's very utility-based. Uh, he's got survivability. He's got the poor bands. I like the Yasha, I think. Gives him good damage and movement speed. Basher is kind of weird, but it's not the end of the world. I think it, it's kind of an okay build in this case because he's not trying to hard carry. Um, when you're not trying to hard carry builds like this, I think can work. But um, if you're playing a carry role, I wouldn't recommend a basher early like this. So Face of Void finally does finish the Battle Fury. Who was the hero that I was just looking at that was getting a really weird brush? Oh, it was Ricky. Ricky built a Boots. He got two Wraith Bands. He almost finished a Diffuser Blade, and then he finishes his Treads. Like, dude, if you're going to go Treads, do it right away. It's 1,000 gold. It gives you 30% attack speed. It gives you some HP and some agility. It's very nice to have immediately. If you're going to rush Diffusal, you might as well rush Diffusal. Don't go halfway there. Um, I still don't, I don't think rushing Diffusal is good. I think going Treads first is always going to be better, but regardless. Can they deny it? Yep, X does get it. The Illusion did a little too little damage. It's going to be a Bloodstone for Timbersaw, by the way. Good item choice. Uh, he's quite delayed on it, though. Um, and he's died quite a few times. Just twice uh, with six assists. It's not the end of the world, but obviously could be having a better game. <coughs> There's a Soul Booster. Ooh, big mistake. He actually made Soul Booster without dissembling his Arcane Boots, which I think is a mistake. Uh, movement speed on Timbersaw is okay, but a lot of people recommend Phase Boots, actually. Can Anti-Mage survive the gank is the question. He's going to buy a TP scroll and blink and... He looks pretty, pretty okay. Unless, of course, Axe gets in the way. He could have thrown a hook. He was actually trying to throw a hook in the right place, but Axe is in the way there, so... Not so good for them. There's the Bastion on Bloodseeker. Anti-Mage continues to auto-attack the jungle to victory. Aghanims is done on Lich. I kind of wish he had a wand or TPs or... They do have some wards up, it looks like, so they are doing some warding, but... And now they're looking to defend. Arcade Boots on Venge. With a Basilius and a one. I think this is mana overkill. If you're going to grab an Arcane Boots, I don't think a Basilius is needed. Because Basilius is largely just a mana item for a Vengeful Spirit. Um, I think it's fine to grab one or one or the other of these. But I think it's too much int be or too much magic. Because you are going to be limited on survivability. He's only got 900 HP. He could have a Bracer here. A Bracer is about the same cost as a Ring of Basilius. I think Arcane Boots is okay. But Venge, regardless, is not that mana dependent. Like, if you have 400 mana points, that should be enough for a Vengeful Spirit in a teamfight, actually. 
Kind of a weird initiation there for the Bloodseeker, but they are going to go in on, on the Pudge. Wow, Chain Frost wrecked house there. And even a Shadow Fiendulty. See Timbersaw kind of walk in, but hasn't been using Timber Chain at all. Like, at all. And even Axe dies, so that's four dead heroes on the Dark Team. Alright, it's time to blow my nose. Hopefully this does not crash at X-Split. I'm glad you guys got to experience that with me. Sans audio, of course. So, all right, pretty good team fight from the Radiant team. Picked off a lot of heroes. A lot of the Dire heroes were not fighting correctly. Mask of Madness, Battle Fiend. This is actually a good chance to kill the Shadow Fiend. Even that range creep is fine. Great stun from Venge, gonna give him a second. He might still be able to, oh, he needed the bash. I think he should have gone for that. I think he should have. Um, if they don't have, all right. It's a little dangerous to go Mask of Menace. I don't always recommend this. I think at low skill levels it's pretty good because uh, the damage output is massive, like really increases. And uh, with with bad coordination, I don't think that getting good Chronospheres with your allies is very likely. So um, the Mask of Menace is okay in this situation, I think. Otherwise, he wouldn't have. He never would have had enough damage to kill the Shadow Fiend there. Um, it'll help him do enough damage against the Anti Mage. But if he uses this outside of a Chronosphere, he's gonna die really fast. The enemy team does have quite a bit of nuke damage. He is actually stacking this, so they some of these some of these players actually have decent mechanics here. But almost a bloodstone for Timbersaw. When he gets there, he's not gonna have any armor, and he should have some armor at this point. Um against an anti-mage who does almost no physical damage, and most importantly, they have Wave of Terror and they have Shadow Fiend's aura, so they have a lot of minus armor on the enemy team. They really they actually need about Vlad's pretty bad this game, in my opinion. <laughs> if they had a Vlad's, they would have 5 armor on everybody on their team. They would have all these life steals. I mean, they have a Void and they have a Ricky. That's a lot of physical damage. Even Axe could use the the uh, the armor, honestly. So, Roshan, you look dead. Pretty dead, Roshan. Um, Axe looks like he's going Blink Dagger finally, which is very, very good. He's praying to God for spins, but has not quite gotten them yet. There's the spins. And in the Rashawn pit, we are going to see nobody take the Aegis. Face the Void takes the Aegis. Lich looking like he wants to finish a possible mech at this point. It's really late for that. Oh man, I thought the hook was going to land. Thought he got him. No detection yet. There's a BKB on Shadow Fiend. Great choice. And we will see the Ricky run for dear life as he scouts. They could maybe fight this. No. Let's see get Face the Void Chrono. Got Aegis. I mean, they could try to rumble with this. Axe would obviously help a lot. He's got a lot of money now. 2,600 gold. He's going to find an Anti-Mage. Wow, look how fast he just lost his mana. That was insane. He actually, once he runs out of mana, Anti-Mage really doesn't do that much damage. Look at this. Oh, there's the ulti, though. And that is going to be it. Now, Axe's mana pool has been increased based on the fact that he has a Blade Mill. It's 10 extra int. He's got decent int gains, so that ulti actually hit really, really hard for Anti-Mage. I thought he was going to be fine. Once his mana was gone... Um, he, uh, uh, HPH really wasn't doing that much damage up, but maybe he could have gotten luckier on the counter helix spins, but after his first Berserker's call, it was all over there. So, kind of ran out of options. Looks like a possible blade mail for Pudge as well. Does he have a Diffusal Blade yet? Almost, almost a Diffusal Blade. Ricky needs to farm this Diffusal Blade before they start team fighting, in my opinion. Shadow Fiend, nothing new. Um, if you're going mech, I recommend doing it maybe earlier. Um, you could go pre items Actually, it looks like they're not communicating. I'm, I'm guessing that both are going to try to get the item. If you're going Arcane Boots um, on Vengeful Spirit, I think grabbing a mech is okay, by the way. So her item build is looking better now that she is uh, adding a mech to it. With a mech and Arcane, you obviously can offset that lack of HP that you have by having too much mana from out of the Basilius and the Arcane Boots. Antimage still has not died, of course, because Antimage is really hard to kill. He's got the Reaver as well, so decent HP on him. Bloodstone's finished on Timbersaw. I still don't think he's using his abilities very appropriately, so it's the largest problem coming out of the Timbersaw this game. And Face the Void's going to find Avenge. Actually, uses Mask Commander's good choice. And nice, he's getting a lot of bashes. It's going to be an easy kill. She was actually going to Ward, I assume. Yep, she was actually going to Ward. As soon as she saw the Face of the Void, she probably should have stunned and ran instead of doing that walk uphill. And it looks like he's going for an AC, actually. Um, Hyperstone plus a Chainmail. <coughs> now, um... A couple things about that item build. I have been talking about a lot about how there's a lot of armor on the Radiant team, so this was actually going to offset this. Keep in mind that the armor auras from Vlad's as well as AC do not stack. 
So that means that grabbing both is sometimes a waste, at least if you're talking about the armor aura. It'll give him a lot of personal survivability against the physical damage output coming from the ready team, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's actually gonna help him a lot more than a BKB would against anti mage. Well, that's not entirely true because um, if he's magic immune, he won't get his mana drained, and therefore there won't be bonus damage from the illusions and stuff. But um, <coughs> AC will give him a lot of attack speed, a lot of armor, and uh, armor for his allies, which is not bad, and attack speed for his allies, which is not the end of the world. I'm gonna find a lich. Does he have defusible? He still does not have it. Taking a long time to react here. Oh wow, faces void actually left here, so no way that he's gonna get the kill. Ricky, come on, Ricky. Give up. You can't get solo kills this late without a, without a Debusal Blade. Like, you gotta stop trying. Anti-Mage kills Faces Void in the bot lane. He did Chronosphere this, apparently. And Anti-Mage got to about 500 HP. And still killed Anti-Mage. Or Faces Void. <clears throat> That's why he TP'd back, actually. He thought he could get a solo kill. Holy crap, 3,000 gold. Please tell me you're not just, like, buying a heart. He should just run. Uh, no, he's so dead. Oh, nice! Sick. That was a good ulti. It's like anti mage. What's up? Will he shit talk? Where's the shit talk? Oh damn! Rage buyback. Rage buy. It doesn't matter because anti mage farms so fast that he can like, he can like farm up the gold that he lost in the same amount of time that he, that he would be dead normally. Doesn't even matter. No big deal. All right, phase void goes back to farming. Diffuse blade finally finished on Ricky. 33 minute diffuse blade. His first items this game. God, he should have had that so long ago. If he just on oh anti mage, he can't kill him solo though. There's no way he's got twice the HP. If he gets an ally here or two allies, he can kill anti mage for sure. Timber saw should not be in his base. There's no reason to be this scared right now. AC almost finished faces void. He's a mere 1,000 gold away from that. I mean, Ricky, if he just finished the diffuse blade super fast early in this game and then went around ganking the whole game, he could have gotten a lot of solo kills. Honestly, he gets a lot of these heroes. I mean, BKBs and things like that are obviously going to prevent it, but the eventual spirit, etc. It's all up. Oh, if he jumps on anti mage right when Vengeance here, this would be so bad. Timber saw shifting over, but I don't see him executing his skills well enough. I don't think he'll be able to grab. He actually grabs a Shadow Fiend. Didn't even Kronos for this. And faces Void's actually doing quite well. He's teeping to the top lane. This could be a big team fight for them. There's the sounds. Will he chrono it? Oh, don't tell me he's going to whiff it. He's going to whiff it. He's going to whiff it. There's the blink. Oh, and he whiffs it. Yep. Whiffed it. Doesn't get him. He should have He should have been able to chrono through, though. As soon as he TP'd in, he could time walk and then chrono on top of the silence. And then probably they could have killed anti-mage there. It would have been huge. But they didn't do it. Fail stoss and stuff. On the bright side, he has been killing yours. Of course, he buys a Reaver. Doesn't get the Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger would have been so clutch. Um, maybe even a Blink BKB, actually, dare I say. Against an Anti-Mage, you don't really want him to attack you either, because it's going to drain your mana so hard. I think a Blink with a BKB was would with a Vanguard would maybe be the best option this game for Axe against an Anti-Mage. Uh, which is weird to say, but I, I think that really would be the best option. I know when I normally play Axe, I don't like getting Blink Dagger, but it makes him such a shitty hero. Like, you really... You really should get Blink Dagger in almost all cases, because otherwise it just puts you so behind. It makes it a lot harder. You can't really use your hero's initiator. You kind of just have to, like, spam Battle Hunger and then walk in and get Berserker's Calls off. It's it's very mediocre, in my opinion. So, uh, Ricky is now roaming on over. He's so weak now, though. I mean, his Diffusal Blade's so late. It's a ganking item, basically. Ganking in slight team fight. Oh, there's the Chrono actually. High ground. He's hitting the anti mage, but look at the damage output. There's the swap as well. And some nukes in there as Axe is gonna spin quite a bit. Wow, and he kills the anti mage. That was huge. Big blade mill usage there. That's a great way to counter him as well. We'll see Venge go down for sure. And this looks like a team fight win for the dire team. Big time. Wow, four dead heroes here. A couple more hits. And Timber saw actually using his skills appropriately. So they get everybody. They only lost the faces void. That fight couldn't have gone better for the dire team. Now I think the Chronosphere is a little weak. It only caught one hero, obviously, and with all the rest of the radiant team on the low ground, they could do things like swap and stun and all that stuff. But the blade mail from Axe killing the anti mage before he even popped the mantis style was absolutely clutch. And that team fight wouldn't have gone nearly that well otherwise. As soon as they kill Shat or as soon as they kill anti mage, the team fight, they actually have a chance to win it, so. That is what happened. Blade Mail turns out also very good against Anti Mage. Who needs a Black King bar when you could just take the damage to him? Just reflected everything that hit him, spun, and then got the ulti off before he ran out of mana, apparently. So that turned out really well. And uh, Pudge also with the Blade Mail. So there's Blade Mail party on the Dire Team. They you do obviously only want to get Blade Mills and you have a lot of HP to leverage out of it. If they get two towers out of this, that'd be huge, but I don't think I don't know if they will be able to grab this one. If they can take both towers. 
That would be huge. That will give him a big gold advantage. If you look at the graphs, it's actually in, been in the radiance here, but the EXP jump down is going to be huge now. So, that should be enough for a heart on X. We'll have a little more HP to reflect. Still crappy mana pool, but has been going okay for him. And they do not take the tower. Put it pretty low. He is going to start using Timber Chain. And the tower goes down, actually. Axe takes it. Veil of Discord bought by the... A Ooh, this looks bad for Axe. He is so dead. Yep. Bought the heart. Uh, he's still going to be able to get the, the heart out of it, of course. Veil. Now, the reason Veil is a really crappy item on Timber Saw is because... Timbersaw actually has very little magic damage. The only magic damage that Timbersaw does is when he uses Whirling Death and there aren't trees around. That's the only time that Whirling Death does magical damage. Everything else is pure. There is literally no damage that Timbersaw does that is magical. Right there, that was pure damage. All pure damage on these creeps. So don't do it. Don't get a veil. Not good. A veil is good for... Pretty much zero damage on the Dire Team. They literally have Battle Hunger, Culling Blade if it doesn't kill the person, and Pudge Rotten Dismember. That's literally the only magic damage that the entire Dire Team has. Except for Time Lock. Time Lock is magical damage. But for God's sake, that's nothing. That's like nothing. Don't, don't. Oh, is he going to do it? He was thinking about it. Does he have AC? He still doesn't have AC. He's got the items, actually. She needs to transfer them. He should probably get BKB after the AC, I think. That'll really help him against the Anti-Mage. Ah, maybe he should get more damage. I'm not quite sure. If Anti-Mage goes Butterfly, it would be bad. But he's t he's farming the slowest heart ever, so... And they still have a chance here. Um, what was I talking about? Veil? Yeah, Veil. Vale. Veil's terrible. It does give him armor. That's cool. And the mana... It does give him a little bit of mana, but I, really not worth it on Timber Saw. I, I can kind of give him a, him a break for not really knowing what the hell to build, but I think... Maybe something like Shiva's Guard is an option. It's a little scary, and the reason I'm saying this is because uh, Shiva's Guard gives you a lot more mana pool, which means that if Anti-Mage does end up ulting you, you're very, very likely to die because um, you're going to be missing more mana. But it, it will give him a lot of more mana pool. Um, it'll give him a ton of survivability. 15 armor versus physical carries is very, very good. And Pudge is actually going to get jumped on by the Anti-Mage. That's not the real one, though. Wow, Anti-Mage might end up dying here. Blade Millet. Yes. Oh, he uses the axe too early. Doesn't matter. Shows the power of Ricky Man. He did he use... I don't think he used Diffuse Blade. They might actually push this now. He's got the AC up. This looks really good for the Dire Team, actually. They are just, like, getting stronger and stronger. There was a heart on the Anti-Mage, but he still ended up dying. Crystallis on the Bloodseeker. Weird item, but it's okay for the damage output. Shadow Fiend's going to disconnect. Little right clicking mid lane. Pudge picks up Assange, which is some decent HP. Probably going for a, a Heaven's Halberd. Actually, pretty good against heroes like Shadow Fiend and Bloodseeker and all those guys. He's just waiting on the low ground trying to hook somebody. Here's a rupture on Ricky, which he doesn't really care a whole lot about. Good play by him to go hide outside of invisibility, or outside of visibility range. Ooh, Chain Frost. Is this going to do a lot? It does look like it's doing a lot. Lich definitely is going to die. Veil is even used. And they get another three kills. Two kills, sorry. Axe got both of those. Can he lane the hook? Veil is still up. Hook up. Oh! Almost. Okay, he gets the kill at least. Ricky goes down. If they could take a Rax, that would be really big for the Dire Team. 13 seconds left for the anti mage to come up. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. He actually had full souls for that. That was actually pretty good. But he may end up dying from it now. Oh, the bashes. And now the chakram. That's a dead kill. Oh, crap. He reflected it. Mask of Manus got the faces void kill. So he's going to buy back. Oh, don't tell me they don't get the racks. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're going to get the range barracks. Oh, big freaking deal. <laughs> oh, my God. If they would have focused fire, they would have a melee barracks, and they're not going to get it. The hook's gonna miss. Axe is gonna die solo. There's no way he'll make this out. Unless the chakram is amazing, I guess. Juke Axe! You're getting HP! Yes! Whoa, put the chakram back. Okay, that was pretty weak juking by, by Axe, but it was good at first. Timber chain the hell out of there. Timber chain. Timber chain. Do it. Timber chain. Nope, he's just gonna walk everywhere. 2,900 gold. He should get like a hex or something. That would be kind of cool, I guess. A hex, maybe? Could a Bissell Blade? Maybe? That's pretty
pretty bad though. God, I don't know. I think he needs disable. Some kind of utility disable would be the best item choices. Or Shivas. I think Shivas. Shivas guard would be the best. Sanchanyasha is the choice for Ricky. Uh, kind of a uh, popular pub item. It's it's okay for damage on Ricky. It's better than other heroes because this agility does give you more damage on a backstab. And you do oftentimes right click and try to slow people down under a cloud, but. Um, not the best option. I think a BKB would be better at this point, especially after the Sanjin Yasha. Maybe he just wants purple items, who knows. Let's see what the rest of the Radiant team is doing. No new items on Bloodseeker. Anti-Mage has heart. He's got 1,800 gold. If he goes BKB, he's going to be fine. Uh, Smoke Cloud won't affect him anymore. He does still have to worry about Axe's Berserker's Call and Pudge's uh, Dismember, but that's it. And Heaven's Halberd's also finished. Actually, pretty good item on Pudge once again. Not only just because you can use it offensively to stop one guy from attacking, but also because it gives him 25% evasion. And when you have this much HP, 25% evasion is actually a lot of extra survivability. Alright, Reaver is the choice for Timbersaw. Heart's not a bad choice either, so I'm kind of happy that he's doing this. Still think the Veil is a complete waste. He could have a heart finished by now, but could be worse. Chakra going to slow down the wave just a bit here. Pudge is a little out of position. He shouldn't be this close. And we're going to see a rupture on the rookie. He's got to be careful. Puts the cloud down and goodbye. How the hell did you Bloodseeker very useful against the Ricky. They shouldn't be fighting this. They just lost a hero. They should get out of here. Stun on Pudge. Oh my god. They're throwing this game away. All they had to do is engage nicely. There's the ulti and the chain frost. That's going to kill Pudge. Tamba chain. Tamba chain. The bash. Oh my gosh. He did use the veil though. So magic resistance on those and now axe is gonna walk into everybody look at this blade mill it doesn't matter when there's eight people hitting you in the meantime faces void is taking a soul oh my god one by one they go he's like okay i want to get a kill i'm gonna hit anti-mage look at the oh it's doing like no damage and now he's going to die he does have an aegis here comes timber saw please don't tell me they're just gonna throw this game away that would be the worst time walks away he's going another rupture Another Chakram actually. Spin, spin, spin. Oh my god, they're gonna lose. They had this shit so hard. Wow, that was the most epic low level throw I've ever seen. One by one. Don't run in one by one, guys. Ah, oh, Pudge should not have been farming creeps. They've avenged. You just got a five man push. Like, they were winning all the team fights. They are winning all the team fights. I understand Ricky got caught because there was a sentry down that happens, but if that's the point, you back up and you let him take a tower. You don't like run one by one and fight their whole team. Oh my gosh, are they just gonna throw in this? Is that how this ends? This looks like that's how this is gonna end. Man, he's gonna hook a Bloodseeker at least. Ulti is a little late. Another rupture. Wow. That's how this ends. One huge team fight mistake from the Dire team and the Radiant team profited from it. So they saw the opportunity and they went for it. So I think they were going to lose, honestly. The Radiant team was going to lose since the Dire team was team fighting decently. They had better items, in my opinion. They still made some item mistakes and things like that, but um, this is... Oh, I am like clicking on stuff. Let's put this back here where it needs to be. Okay, perfect. Oh, damn! I actually like that staff a lot. I don't have that one. I wish I did. That one's cool. Staff of the Eagle. Alright, cool. That's it for this game of Purge Castle Pub. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm going to start streaming now. PurgeGamers.com slash... I'm sorry. Twitch.tv. No. PurgeGamers.com slash stream. Or you can go straight to my Twitch TV at Twitch.tv slash PurgeGamers. That's where you can go watch this. There's the uh, match ID if you guys want to watch this game. 8900 and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll see you later. Bye. Sorry I'm sick.